Amen. This as a this as a Dari and Jews, if I remember in the history after Karbala, there were only a few women. Imam Sajjad, he mentioned in Mecca and Medina, there were only 20 women. But today, Alhamdulillah, because of the Jews, there are 400 million followers of Ahlul Bayt. She herself is managing his azadari. Now, we we have our own responsibility. As a Zahra Salamullah, she is doing her job, and you know that we have Rivaya, that there is a majlis as a Zahra Salamullah is over there. Like I mentioned several times, that one of the one of the great Zakir or Alim. He mentioned that um, I used to recite a lot of majalis in the first ashra, and one time I was like my schedule was booked. You know, in Iran they have like majalis from morning till night. So he says that my schedule was such that I was reciting majalis in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. One day, an old old lady she asked me, "Aha, can you please recite majalis in my house?" And he said, I didn't have a time. What can I do? So I just, like, I thought that maybe she will not be agree on this time in which I'm going to give her. I said that, look, only time I'm available after Zohar is 2 p.m. I thought that because majority of the people at that 2 p.m. the rest, I thought she will not be to accept. But she said, all right, all right, that's fine. 2 p.m. is fine. And he said that I agreed, and then I start going over there. There are only like few ladies used to sit down, and they used to listen my majalis. And I just delivered like some masail, masail and fadail, and I left. He said that my schedule was such that every the day of Ashura, I shift all my majalis in the morning, so I have time for Shami Gariba. So I forgot to tell her that tomorrow in the day of Ashura, my majlis will shift in the morning. And I forgot about the majlis. So I recited majlis in the morning and I was like, I was, I came home to take a nap. <laughs> While I was, I was like kind of sleeping that I saw as a Zahra Salam. Oh, oh, she says, where's the hadith? You forgot this old lady is waiting for you. And I remember I woke up and said, oh my God, yes, it's 2 p.m. almost. She's maybe waiting for me and I didn't inform her. So he said, I ran towards her house. I ran and I saw from the far that she was coming out from the house, going back in the house, coming out from the house, going back in the house. I said, oh my God. I arrived over there and she, the first, as soon as she started, Mirza Hadi, where was you? Where were you? Mother Zahra is waiting in the house and I was I was beating my head I says what I saw in my dream she is seeing in real so again always believe these majalis these julus as a zahra salamullah alayha she is supporting us now what's our responsibility what's our responsibility especially in the west in the west our responsibility is you need to first believe. First, you need to believe on Aima alayhi salam. Also, believe in their instruction and then introduce them to the rest of the world. You need to introduce. That's our responsibility. We have the big responsibility on our shoulder to introduce. You know, some people by Accident they got introduced by <coughs> Amirul Mominin. George Jordok, one of the poet and a writer in Lebanon, he said, I was writing a thesis and someone, one of my friends said, Hey, did you? And I had some question about Islam. That person, he said that my friend of mine, he introduced me to Najul Balaga. And now look, this person was an adib. Adib is someone who's expert in Arabic grammar. And he says, I finally I, I got the Nahjul Balaga, he started reading Oh my god, what is this 
Facebook. Let me ask, how many of us, how many of the, or how many of you, how many of us read Nigel Balaga from first page to end one time? You rarely find any Shia rule. This person, he read Nahajul Balaga 200 times. And he acknowledged that. And he's a Christian, George Jordan. Finally, he wrote this book, Ali, the Voice of Justice. His introduction was this. He said that Ali born 1,000 years before his time. Before his time. The time he was born before because the people they didn't understand Ali. So again, that's one example for this. And again, you will be surprised. Uh, let me share this uh, another accident which happened with another Christian. At this time, this was a, a Christian from Syria. Uh, he wrote, when he got introduced to Amirul Mu'minin, he wrote a poem, poem which has 6,000 bad. All about Amirul Mu'mineen. All about Abu Nur, Abdul Masih and Taqi. Again, this is a racket. If someone will record this in Yanis book, that 6,000 bad of one poem. Again, this person said that he's addressing to Amirul Mu'mineen. Now pay attention to this, this poetry. I'm going to translate this poetry for you. That's in Arabic. He says, he started this way. He says, Wasfah ya Aba Hassan, Amman tajarra an hubbi ala mad midhihi tasammu mabayana. He says, Ya Ali, forgive me my arrogance. I'm doing this jur'at to write poetry about you. Who can write poetry about you? I'm doing this jur'at that I'm allowing myself to praise you because the intensity of my love for you forced me to do that. Please accept this. So again, you need to first believe the personality and the real picture of Amirul. You need to believe that. Like uh, there are several poets they mention. Ali ay humay rahmat, tuchi ayati khudara. Ali ay humay rahmat, tuchi ayati khudara. I swear to God, Amirul Mu'minin is the biggest. Like he himself said, I am the biggest eye of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And that's why he said, Ali ay humay rahmat, tuchi ayati khudara. Ibi ma siba fikandi hamisay ay humara. Let me explain that that poet to you. He says, Ali, oh Huma e Rahmat. You know, Huma is like one of the bird in like uh, in old Dastan and old stories where that said that bird used to select a king. He said, You are the Huma of Rahmat. You are that bird of the Rahmat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent you on this earth to distribute his Rahmat on this earth. And you know that Ali is what? Asimun Nare. Well, Jannah, you need to introduce this, I mean, the personality of Amirul Mu'mineen to this humanity. Amirul Mu'mineen, like this, another person, another Christian, he says, lying for the people if they are saying that Ali belongs to them. No, Ali belongs to human history. He belongs to every nation. Again, another Christian. Another Christian. So brothers and sisters, our responsibility is big. When you're coming out, you should not make like a, this soda with that, this is like you make this transaction. Ma'amla, very cheap ma'amla. Do not have the cheap ma'amla. That okay, I'll, 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 I'll just give me some shifa, give me something, give me this. No, no, no. They, I, I told you, you're coming to the door of Kareem with the Kareem. That Kareem, the Kareem, Kareem. Like I was, Mentioning in IEC over there in my in my majalis, 
the reason these people they did zulm of Amirul Mu'minin or any Imam because they were Kareem. They were Kareem. Like I recited that verse over there where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking the Ya Ayyul Insan, Ma gharraka bi rabbika al Kareem. Oh Insan, what's wrong with you? What deceived you? Is that because of Rabbi Kareem? Because I'm Kareem, I'm not going to say anything. That's why you have this jor'at. This is own. Now tonight, because I have limited time, so I'm going to skip all these things and I just go directly for the Masai. The Madhurumiyat of Imam, because he's Kareem. He's <coughs> Kareem. Kareem is someone I cannot even explain that Kareem. You will say kind. No, come on. These English words cannot justify these words. I can just give you this, this information. One time, this barbaric person from Wahabia, he was forcing people in Medina to do bay'ah. And this Madina people of the Madina they gather and says, let's do the bay'ah because you know even even Ali, if he will come back, he's not going to punish us. Why are the people of the Kufa? They deceive Imam Hussain. What is these people they came says, come, let's go. If Ziyad is like a barbaric person, he will kill you. But if Imam Hussain becomes not going to say anything to you, that's the sign of the Kareem. Why this Malhun? Tonight, like when we are commemorating the Shahadat of Amirul Mu'minin, Amirul Mu'minin, you know, Amirul Mu'minin had that heavy burden on his chest. Someone asked from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, Ya Imam, no. which Imam was a Muslim, most Muslim. Imam says, My Jad Amirul Mu'minin. My Jad Amirul Mu'minin. Why Amirul Mu'minin? Imagine the one, one person who is the most brave, the bravest person. And these Malon will come in his house and do attack on his house. Why did they do that? Because they knew that Imam is Kareem. He doesn't take the sword without reason. He's Kareem. And Imam had that karama, that's why. Let me take you back to the Kufa. Your body is here in Houston downtown, but your soul can go and travel to the Kufa. Let's take our soul, close your eyes and go to the Kufa. Go to the house of Amirul Mu'minin. Amirul Mu'minin is injured. He's on his deathbed. He's on his deathbed. He had you know, I mentioned this last time that all Imam, whether they got killed by sword or by poison, Amir al Mu'minin got killed by both. <laughs> got killed by both. Amir al Mu'minin, he's not that. Amir al Mu'minin, when he was painting at Umm Kulsum, she passed by this Malun Ibn Muljam. And she, she said to Ibn Muljam, Inshallah, my Baba will get cured. Ibn Muljam smiled and says, that's your dream. When I bought this sword, I spent 1,000 dinar. And then I bought that poison for 1,000 dinar. <laughs> and now they realize that the reason Imam is so weak is because of the poison. They call, they call this Iranian doctor, Hani bin Umroi Saluli. The doctor came. He said, slaughter a goat. He got the vein from the neck. And he put that vein, he warmed that and put it on the on the wound of Amirul Mu'minin. And he was waiting. Everyone was anxiously waiting. They still have the hope that Amirul Mu'minin get cured. But then after a while, he put this, he looked at it, and he put his head down, turned his face toward Amirul Mu'minin, said, Ya Amirul Mu'minin, this is the time you can do wasiyat. This is the time of Asiya, and now everyone starts crying. 
Now they understand there is no hope. There is no hope. Imam Hassan came outside, asked, asked all the companions. There were several lovers of Amir al -Mumin. They were gathered outside. Imam came outside and says, Oh, Ashab, oh companions of my Baba. The situation, my Baba's situation is not good. Please go, go back. And then Imam came inside. After a while, Imam went back again and he saw that Asbaq bin Nabata. Asbaq bin Nabata is one of the Khamis. He was very close to Amirul Muhammadin. He was sitting over there. Imam Hassan said, Ji, Asbaq, Asbaq, didn't you hear what I said? <laughs> Asbaq started crying. He says, Mahla, I wanted to go back, but I, I don't have, I cannot move my feet. Please, I beg you, one time, one time, give me this opportunity that I can see my Mawla. I can see my Mawla one more time. Please give me this opportunity. Imam Hassan got that opportunity. Imam brought Azbaq inside. Azbaq said, I came inside, I saw my Mawla. He was laying down on the bed. I never saw Mawla laying down on the bed. Mawla was like a lion. He says, I'm seeing a lion. Sinistress is laying down on the bed. There was like a bandage, the yellow bandage on the, on the forehead of a mural moment. He said, I was not able to distinguish him. A mural moment in face was more yellowish on the bandage. I threw myself on the feet of Amirul Mu'minin. When Amirul Mu'minin really he opened the eyes, he says, Who is this Asma? Is that you? I said, Ya Mawla, ya, that's me. I tried to cry, then Mawla said, Asma, Asma, do not cry. Stand up and look at full soup. They will start crying if they will see you crying. I will say, Mawla. Mawla, you have so much worry about the crying of the Zainab. Mawla, is that you are seeing the Karbala? Are you seeing as a Zainab? Salamullah alayha until a Zainabiya. And a Zainab was there. And in Kufa, in Kufa, when this Mawla Bolshevik, he had to ask him, I will go in. People came down and he straight and grabbed him. But in the court in Karbala, in Karbala when Imam Hussain dismounted from the horse, he came on the way the Kodiyat of the Lega. There was no one there to protect. Now people, they start coming in the groups. Someone will bring in the sword to kill Imam Hussain. The other people, they were bringing the arrows. They were throwing arrows. And the people, they didn't have the arrows in the sword. They got the stones and they would start throwing on Imam Hussain. And they this time as a Zainab Salamullah she was standing and watching and she was saying Amami Kumarmen Kumbi Muslim is there any Muslim among you? Oh Prasad you are seeing and they are killing Abab Abdullah and she didn't find any response she turned her face toward Madina Ya Muhammad Wa Hasana Wa Aliya Ya Ali, Ya Ali, Ya Ali.